Amanda Seyfried has to deal with a love triangle and a werewolf terrorizing her small village in this reimagining in the classic fairy tale, Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood is director Catherine Hardwick's follow-up to the 2008 vampire smash, Twilight. I haven't seen that film, but Jacob here has, so we gotta know. Uh, Jacob, has Hardwick learned anything from her last nausea-inducing monster mash? Well, it's pretty obvious that Twilight's financial success had more to do with the popular source material than anything Hardwick brought to it. But Hollywood didn't think so, so she's back with another supernatural story of young love. I would probably say that this is a slightly better movie than Twilight, but that's not saying a whole lot. This is still a pretty superficial slog. Don't come near me. Do you think I'm the wolf? You shouldn't be here. You're afraid? I checked out of this thing pretty early on because the film never gave me any reason to care. It's so slight and inconsequential. Even the movie's big mystery, who is the werewolf in this small village, is handled so clumsily with red herrings dropped so obviously and suspects defined so poorly that it's an insult to the audience. Oh yeah, flat out, it's a two hour cinematic dirge. Listing the failures would be an act of futility, plus on top of the overacting and illogical plot turns, the grand reveal can only be described by saying, good grief. What tries to be a story about desperation and fear is really more of a tweener melodrama. I'm wrong for you. I don't care. Why Warner Brothers gave this script and concept the green light is baffling. Little Red Riding Hood is a good enough fable that it should have produced a decent film. Instead, we get this two hour cheese fest. It's not worth the price of admission. Next time, please leave the fairy tales to Disney. I do have a couple of nice things to say about this movie. Amanda Seyfried is very easy on the eyes, and <laughs> Gary Oldman is in this, and if you know Gary Oldman, he can chew up scenery like nobody's business. It made you think he'd lived on Mount Remorse so that you would not look for it in the most obvious place. The wolf lives here. But those are both things you can appreciate by watching much better movies. This one is not worth the price of admission.